husband and wife, many a times, the devil tries to bring them apart, rip them to pieces for nothing, for no reason. Sometimes it's because we become impatient with one another. We live with one another. This is why the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Khayrukum, Khayrukum li ahlihi. If you want to know the best from amongst you, he who is best to his wife and his family members. The same applies to a female. She who is best to her husband and family members. If your husband or your wife or your family members can bear witness that you are a very good person, then indeed you are good because you live with them 24-7. What's the point of your neighbors and your you know, workmates and others thinking, wow, what a gorgeous man, what a lovely person he is. That's because you go to work, you smile, because you're being paid to smile. You work so nicely, you know, you're so kind to your bosses and everyone because you're being paid to do that. You know, some wives wouldn't mind paying their husbands to see that smile because we don't smile sometimes. We come into the home, we throw everything onto one side, we sit in front of the television with our newspapers and we're being spoken to and we're just saying, hmm, yes, hmm, yes, until they might even ask us, are you a fool? And you say, hmm, yes. This is the type of behavior we have sometimes. We don't even know what they're saying. yet. Someone phones you from work, full concentration on the phone call. What is this? Is this not a double standard relation? Did we not understand that we are working in order to enjoy our life, our married life? We are not married in order to enjoy our working life. People have turned the tables. And this is why if your work is coming and interfering with your marriage, you'd rather leave your work than to end your marriage. We need to know this. Because if we are going to leave our marriages in order to make our work work, we will end up leaving every marriage we are in. No one wants to marry a person who's married to his job. We ask the Almighty to grant us understanding. The point I'm raising is some people prioritize wrongly and they end up giving priority to that which is not supposed to be right at the top over and above the things which are supposed to be right at the top. And for this reason, children are neglected, wives are neglected, sometimes husbands are neglected. The way we speak to them is far worse than the way we speak to others. Sometimes, as I said, at work, we can speak so calm, so kind to everyone, but come home and suddenly we have such a face. Everybody's helter-skelter, everybody's running around. No one wants to sit with us. We don't sit with anyone. When we're on the table, we have, you know, a frown and we look at everyone as the most harsh of people and yet at work, even the girl who brought the tea to us, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, it was so sweet of you. Couldn't you say that to your own wife? Thank you very much, it was so sweet of you. Sometimes we have a, these examples can go on and on. But the point being raised is we need to make an effort to try and build the relation. Relations are built. They don't just happen. They are built. And it's like a little plant. You have the seed. The more you water it, the better it will grow. Sometimes you add a little bit of fertilizer and you find it will grow better. The fruit from it will become or will be of a far more superior quality. So you need to know in the same way you're ready to put fertilizer there. Sometimes a little rose can do a lot, a lot of positive, you know, within the home. And yet we haven't ever done that. There are people sometimes who will buy chocolates and gifts for others who are not even related to them. And yet for their own family members, they've never even bought a single rose, nor have they bought a little gift, nor have they had a surprise for them. Why? This is when you have the relation breaking, especially today in the age of television, in the age of the internet, where people are watching others live, sometimes even on the box, and they see how you know, happy others might be, they, they tend wrongly to compare. It is wrong to compare. It is in fact almost detrimental to compare your marriage to those who might appear to you to be happier than you. But people are doing it. And when they do this, at least we need to know, let us try our best to develop such a solid relation that they can discuss things with us openly in a respectful manner. Look, this is where you're making a mistake. This is where I think you need correction. And don't feel bad about it. Take it. Some men think that we don't want to be corrected and the same applies to some females. And this is husband and wife. We are supposed to be the closest and yet we can't even communicate. If that is the case, we're wrong. We then have husbands who threaten and continue to threaten. What do they say? No, no, no. If you tell me this, I'm going to send you home. What type of a relation do we expect there? She has a right to highlight it and you need to think about it. This is the closest person to you telling you that I think you need attention. And if, you, if they are really thinking that, then you probably do need that attention. Or you need to engage them in discussion and convince them why you don't need that. But you don't just dish out commands. I don't even have time. I, I don't have time to talk to you. I don't have time. Come the weekends, we're sitting with our friends. Well, why did you get married? You have a wife, 
you have children. These are the first order of your friends. This is the, the, the most intimate circle. If you are not prepared to spend time with them, then how do you expect the marriage to